Our Jet 2 flight has arrived in Venice late morning and we've pre-booked a water taxi to take us to our hotel. We're staying at the Ruzzini Palace, about midway between the Rialto and St Mark's. And there's our hotel landing stage under the flag. The hotel is housed in a 16th century palazzo which has been home to three doges. We have a junior suite, which is in a large room that incorporates a sort of pod, which houses the bathroom. We overlook the Campo Santa Maria Formosa and the church which gives the Campo its name. Walking across the square, we soon cross this first canal and start on our way towards St Mark's. There's a main gondola station at the Bacino Orseolo. About 15 minutes after leaving the hotel, we're in St Mark's Square. Next day, we plan to take the water bus to Burano but we start with a walk, passing the hospital of St John and St Paul with its very imposing entrance hall. Next door is the church of St John and St Paul. This is the same canal that our water taxi brought us on the day before. We've arrived at Fondamente Nova, where we'll buy our tickets and get the water bus to the island of Burano. It takes the water bus about 45 minutes to reach Burano. The buildings are painted in bright colours here, Tobamori style. The economy is very much dependent on tourism, like all of Venice, but this is still also very much a living community. The Church of St. Martin. We stopped for a coffee and some very nice pastries in the cafe on the corner here. We stopped for lunch at the Riva Rosa restaurant and very nice it was too. Then it's back to the water bus stop. From here you can see the island of Torcello, which is where the settlement of the Venetian lagoon began over 1500 years ago. Our bus is now heading back across the lagoon. Passing Marco Polo Airport. Approaching Murano now, famous for its glass making. 
some of the glass factories along the water's edge. DHL deliver in Murano. Passing San Michele Island, which houses Venice's cemetery. Approaching the terminus now and heading back to our hotel to prepare for the evening where we have a birthday dinner at the Club del Dolce at the Gritty Palace Hotel on the Grand Canal. Next day we are walking, aiming for Frari Church, which means that first we have to get to Rialto, cross the bridge to the other side of the Grand Canal. This large square is Campo San Polo, so we know we haven't got lost and we've only got a couple more turns to find the church. And here it is, Santa Maria Gloriosa dei Frari. The church was founded by the Franciscans in 1250, but in its present form the church was finished in 1492. The church contains many important works of art and the tombs of many important people. The painting of the Assumption is by Titian. This is by Bellini. This is by Vivarini. This is by Donatello. The tomb of the great composer Claudio Monteverdi. This is also by Vivarini. This is another Titian. This is Titian's tomb. This is the monument to the sculptor Antonio Canova. After our coffee break, we take the traghetto, the small ferry, across the Grand Canal. From our landing point, we can glimpse the Rialto Bridge. Another large square or campo. We're not lost, uh, we're just not sure what direction we're facing in. We find ourselves in St Mark's Square by the Doge's Palace. We have lunch nearby and return to the hotel to get ready for the evening, which is to be a night at the opera. Mm. 
That's La Fenice's tiny landing stage. We have a box in the first tier. Tonight's performance is Donizetti's L'Elysia d'Amore. For our last full day, we buy a day ticket for the water buses and we plan to spend most of the time just sailing around, focusing on the Grand Canal. Our first stop is the public gardens east of St Mark's Square. Also here are the gardens of the Biennale Arts Festival, but we decided not to pay to go in and just had a stroll around the public areas. This is the monument to the partisan woman. Good views back to St Mark's and central Venice from here. We board the number two water bus for a circular tour via the Grand Canal and the Giudecca. The Gritty Palace Hotel and the terrace where we had our birthday dinner. Santa Lucia Railway Station. It's named after a church which had to be demolished to make way for the original station on this site. The Constitution Bridge, inaugurated in 2008, is the newest of the four bridges which cross the Grand Canal. Who knew Venice had a hop-on hop-off water bus? The people mover terminus on Tronchetto. The cable pulled system links Tronchetto with the cruise terminal and Piazzale Roma. As we move round towards the Giudecca Canal, we get the view of the petrochemical industries on the mainland. The Hilton Molino Stucchi Hotel is in what used to be a flour mill. Approaching San Giorgio now, opposite the Doge's Palace. Back on dry land now, time for a quick look at the Bridge of Sighs and San Giorgio again. In the morning, we have a pre-booked water taxi to take us from the hotel to Marco Polo Airport. <laughs> 